What's going on everyone? Today we are making a sign for my buddies over at fit.co and their new brand and new logo. Check it out. Here I'm cutting some angle iron. Um, the sign is going to be wrapped in metal and using reclaimed barn wood for the backer and for the lettering itself. I like to use lap joints when I'm working with angle iron, so that's how I do this right here. I just mark them off and then go ahead and cut them out. Once I have everything marked, I take the grinder and I go ahead and cut out the section that I marked with the soapstone. This is a pretty simple way to get yourself a nice tight joint that's easily weldable and you're not working with miters or having to cut angles that look sloppy. All this is going to be hidden in the back of the sign anyway. Here I'm tacking up the frame real quick making sure that everything is square after I get the tacks on there and then I go ahead and fully weld the piece together. Here you can see I'm throwing some beads on the back of the sign. Uh, go ahead and bevel those edges so you get some good penetration. These don't have to be pretty. They're going to be ground down after the fact. And like I said, I'm taking the flap wheel here and grinding down the welds so it's just flush against the wall. It doesn't have to be pretty, just getting them knocked down so it has a nice flush back on it. Moving along, I go ahead and drill some holes to mount the backer boards to, and then I'm going to go and use a countersink to make sure that the screws are sitting flush with the back as well. Put some lube on there to make sure your bit doesn't get worn out. On to the backer board. This here is some reclaimed barn wood. It's really cool. It's got this nice gray patina to it, and I'm cutting that down into sections. Here I'm ripping the board down to width, and I'm going to go ahead and do that for both pieces. I do have to put a another smaller piece in the center, and I have that ripped down already from another project that I did in the past. Here I'm mocking up the frame. I'm going to take the backer board and lay it out the way I want it to see what it looks like. Uh, pretty simple so this didn't take too long. As you can see that wood has some really cool patina to it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and throw some screws in the back so it holds in there. This part's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just using uh, three-quarter inch wood screws to mount the wood into the frame itself. I've uh, had some success with this in the past, and it's a really simple, easy way to go ahead and build a frame and mount some wood into it. Now, because the back will be against the wall, if you wanted to, you could throw some stretchers um, to make sure that piece is held together a little bit tighter. But I, uh, for as small as this one is, I, I didn't feel the need for that. I like to go ahead and take a wire brush and brush off the, the wood before I mill it down. It just makes it a little bit easier when I get to sanding that I'm not causing as much of a mess as when I would just take the sander right to that dirty wood. And you can see there's a lot of dirt on this stuff. So go ahead and scrub and clean that off. And now here I'm laying out the letters, getting some rough sizes and cutting it down. Taking the sander to it now and you can see it's peeling away a lot of the dirt and the grime that was on the board itself and revealing that really cool wood that's uh, underneath it. For logoing projects like this I like to get the letters printed out on stickers so that way I have a proper sizing and proper spacing and everything. I'm fortunate to have a sign company in the same building as my workshop so they go ahead and make these up for me. You can do the same thing with some adhesive spray and uh, printing your letters out on just regular computer paper and sticking them on there as well. This works pretty good for me. So now that I got the letters stuck on there, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing. I got to take my time here because 
that wood is so old and dirty still, even after sanding it, that the letters weren't sticking the best. So I peel it away and uh, take my time to make sure I'm not ripping the letters themselves. I went ahead and hit the outline of the letters with a little bit of marker so they would pop if the stickers did come off. And now I'm just roughly cutting out the two sections for the sign with the jigsaw. Here I bring the letters over to the bandsaw and now I'm cutting them out as tight as I can to those lines. This is pretty soft wood so I didn't really have any drift in the blade or have any issues getting up tight onto where those sticker lines that I marked off were coming. If you do not feel comfortable doing something like this, you can stay outside the line and get as tight as you can with a sander, uh, oscillating or orbital sander after the fact. On the I and TT part here, you can see that I had to mount it to some hardboard because a, one of the grains were just split the entire way down the bottom. So using the board, I was able to still cut the shapes to the size I wanted them in one continuous piece. And then I'll go ahead and use some CA glue I'll show in the next couple clips to glue that together. This is just a simple fix for something like this. This is a sign, so structurally it doesn't have to be too sound as long as it stays together. And when I mount it to the board, I made sure I mounted every individual piece uh, individually so that it would stay on there and had some, some good support. Here I'm using a drill and the jigsaw to cut out the inside. Just poke yourself a hole and then drop the jigsaw and take your time and get as close to the lines as you possibly can. So after I got all the letters cut out, I go ahead and take my little hockey puck Jimmy DeResta style sander here and just knock down the grain so it's smooth. I'm using 120 grit here. I don't want to get too crazy with it because I want to keep the character in the wood. Like I said earlier, I'm going to use some CA glue to keep this bottom part on that you can see the grain cracked through. CA glue is a nice little hack. It dries quickly, and if you're not doing something that needs to be too structurally sound, it's a good way to quickly fix issues like this one. And now we're on the final assembly. I'm going to lay out the letters and you can see hey, that's one continuous piece now and it's not falling apart on me. And I'm going to hot glue them down just so I have the placement onto the wood itself and that way I can move it around before I permanently mount them with some countersunk screws from the back. And like I said, I crawl underneath here and I'm just countersinking some holes, uh, referencing them on where my hand is on the top, and then running in some two inch drywall screws to mount the wood to it.
Now that it's all screwed together, I go ahead and hit it with a spray gun. I'm using water-based acrylic polyurethane here. It's a, I'm a big fan of it. It doesn't yellow over time, and it's very, very easy to work with. I want to thank you guys for watching. This was a fun build that was pretty simple, and I was able to use some really cool materials and get a really good look. These guys really liked it. If you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe, and share any comments you might have down below. Thanks.